Shalom to all our PBC listeners and welcome to another episode of Women of the Bible. Today, it's only myself and Shanae Shalom. that will be sharing the life lessons and story of Deborah. Our beloved Annie will be with us next week again, but we will surely miss her viewpoints today as we discuss Deborah, a shining example of faith in Elohim who arose as a light to her people and also turned many others' service and faith in Elohim at a time when it was sorely needed. You will read about Deborah in Judges 4 and 5. Let's look into her story. Okay, her name means bee. They say that Hebrew people are said to be like bees in several ways. Let's, let's look at them. One of them is just as bees follow their leader in a swarm, the Jewish people follow the sages and prophets to teach them. As a bee, sting is quite painful, but the bee's honey is incredibly sweet. God's word will sting those who don't follow his commands, but will bless those who, life, who live righteously with a sweet life. Bees collect pollen and nectar, not for their own benefit, but for the benefit of others. Just as the Hebrews collect mitvas, mitzvas, ooh, I hope I say that, a good deed done for others or religious benefit, for the Lord's pleasure and benefit. Bees are a lowly insect, which is a reminder to God's children to be humble. Wow, I love this. May we, re may we remember the bee characteristics in Deborah's name. I also read that her name suggests a prophetic role as she spoke to Barak. The consonants in her name are the same as those in the Hebrew word translated speak and word. Back to yeah. you, Shanae. <laughs> Okay, Deborah is one of the most influential women of the Bible. She is known for her wisdom and courage, and she is also the only woman of the New Testament known for her own faith and action. Mm. As a prophet and a judge, Deborah was said to hear God's voice and share His word. As a priestess, she did not do any sacrifices. However, she did lead the people in worship, mm. and she preached. In Judges 4, verse 4, we read that she is a prophetess and the wife of L Lapidoth. In the Hebrew language, the word for wife and woman is the same. So, we are not sure was the, the wife of Lapidoth her husband or women of Lapidoth a city. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, Deborah the judge. Elohim assigned judges over Israel when the Israelites had turned their backs on him. The book of Judges describes success successive individuals, each from a different tribe of Israel, chosen by Elohim to rescue the people from their enemies and establish justice. So, Deborah was one of them. She was the fourth in order of the judges and like the rest of the judges, she became a leader of her people in times of national distress. She was the only fem female ruler of the Hebrews in the Old Testament. These rulers were called Mishpat, mm. which is translated as judge. A role that originated back when Moses appointed helpers to assist him in resolving arguments among the people. Many of the judges were also thought of as prophets who articulated a word from the Lord. In those days, the judges sought guidance from Elohim by praying and meditating before proclaiming their ruling on a matter. Deborah would sit under the palm tree between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites would line up for her to rule on a matter. Well, this part of the story inspires me. <laughs> I'm always imagining the scene of her sitting under the palm tree, helping the people with her expertise. Now I know that a palm tree is a significant landmark, as they were rare in those days. But let's just talk about this whole setting for a moment. Deborah stood out. That's a fact. So often we tend to conform, rather to be different. We settle for the crowd, become lazy, lukewarm or lack boldness. We forget that He has called us to do good works and manifest His glory and His kingdom. In 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, 
But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own position, possession, uh, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. And also Matthew 5 verse 14 to 16 that says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Deborah stood out, and she did not blend in, nor let her calling and talents go to waste. She dared to be different and shined a light for all to see. As a judge, she had to make decisions that would uh, make her less popular at times. We can learn from her for obeying God unquestionably even if others might be persecuting you. She marched right into potential danger because she believed what God said. We might not be called by Elohim to enter a physical battle, but he often calls us to step into the unknown. His glory reflects on us as we obey each day more and more. Let us walk in the light as he is in the light, bringing God's justice and mercy to a broken and chaotic world. Stand out as Deborah stood out, but also be humble as she was humble. Be a city on a hill and the salt of the earth. Shoo. Wow. <laughs> Deborah, upon receiving instructions from, from God, called Barak, an Israelite warrior, to bring 10,000 troops up Mount Tabor to attack Caesarea, Jabin's commander of troops. In Judges 4 verse 8 we read, And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, verse 9, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest, shall not be for thine honour. For the Lord shall sell Caesarea into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose, and went with Barak to Kadesh. Judge and warrior De Deborah went off to battle with Barak and as foretold in prophecy, Caesarea fell at the hands of a woman, but not Deborah. Rather, it was Yael, the wife of a clan leader who would avenge the Israelites by driving a tent peg through Caesarea's head with a mallet when he asked for water and respite. Sure, that's a dick. <laughs> sure. <laughs> There is a lot of dispute about regarding Barak's response. He respected her and did what she commanded, and then there is also belief that he was uncomfortable taking orders from a woman regardless what position she had. In Judges 5, we read that how Deborah led them into battle with the Canaanites and the Caesareas and the victory they had. Sure, yeah, I do believe that Deborah had success in the victory because she continually asked for Elohim's guidance and obeyed faithfully. She obviously had a fervent prayer life as well. If we want a life like Deborah's life, we really don't have the luxury of having a lukewarm spiritual life. With great victory comes great commitment, prayer, fasting, boldness, crucifying, one, crucifying one's flesh, and only listening to our Father's voice and no other. What also stands out for me is the fact that Deborah did not take all the credit for mm. the victory. Mm. As we already mentioned, she was a humble person with godly wisdom. Good leaders must have the knowing that those they lead will sometimes lift them up on a pedestal, while it is only Elohim that is worthy of the glory. Sometimes people in leading positions overshadow the spiritual experience of their followers and their followers start to look at them as being so extraordinary that they don't see themselves as someone whom God can also empower and equip to do mighty things. What can we learn from Deborah's life? Be courageous, be obedient, stand true in your faith in Elohim that he will lead us faithfully and that he will get victory with him 
on our side. Oh well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I'd like to add, fight without works is dead. <laughs> Abba Father cannot help you win the battle if you never actually get into the fight. You also cannot defeat an enemy if you hold on to fear. Fear and faith cannot operate together. We can, however, remember that courage is not really the total absence of fear, but resolving to trust and obey Elohim in the face of our fears and concerns. Whatever your battle is, stretch yourself to face the enemy with boldness, but also humility. Be on fire for God and leave behind your lukewarm state. Serve others as the Bora did and obey our Father's voice. Remember that even if you cannot hear his voice clearly every, every day, he already gave his whole word, the Bible, full of this, uh, directions. If you are not obeying the commands, instructions and guidelines given in the Bible, how will he talk to you personally if the basics are not even being followed? How will he call you to lead or act out a special command if you are not willing to obey the foundation of the word? We should step out with heroism and obedience to God, no matter what. We should pray for wisdom as Deborah had true wisdom. We cannot expect victory if we lack wisdom and humility. Because once the battle is complete, the enemy will try to get you down, with pride or other distractions. Deborah stood tall amid adversity, not thinking of herself, but keeping the future of the nation in mind. Her obedience to Elohim and her wisdom earned respect and brought forth victory. We should also be truthful, only sharing what we heard from Abba Father. The enemy would love for us to focus on our own agenda and desires. We are to only speak when we are sure he spoke and only share the his message that will bring glory to him and not attract any limelight to ourselves. May our Father help us to become more like him, less of us. Wow, yes. Okay, so let's close in prayer. Mm. Thank you, Abba, that we can come to you today, Father, and that we can see Deborah's life, Father, I ask that you would give us guidance, Father, like you have given her guidance, Father, and may we not be lukewarm, Father, but that we will have passion and love for your word, Father, and for you, Father, mm. no matter what the people might think of us, Father, that, but we will only be obedient towards you, Father. That we may be humble and not to have selfish ambitions. Abba, may we be different from the world. May we stand out, mm. Father. And I thank you that you have not given us a spirit of fear, Father, but of love, power, and of a sound mind, Father. Mm. Thank you, Father. I pray also that we will have wisdom in every situation, Father, that, like the Bora prayed, Father. I, I pray this in your holy name. In Yeshua Messiah. Amen. Amen. Till next week. Shalom. Shalom.